This is video 9.1.2, and the goal here is to write the standard form for an ellipse and to solve problems involving ellipses. So now we're going to get into slightly more advanced problems with ellipses where it's not in standard form. So let's start with finding an equation. So we're given some clues, and what we're going to do is take these clues, put them into uh, what we know, and maybe even graph it to kind of make sense of the problem. So the vertices. So let's put that on the graph and think about what that means. The vertices. Negative 1, negative 3. So negative 1, negative 3. A vertice. Negative 1, 5. So these are my two vertices. My foci. Negative 1, negative 1. Negative 1, 3. These are my two foci. Now, since I can see my vertices and I can see my foci on the line of the vertices, I should be able to find the center of my graph using what I know about the symmetry of the ellipse. The center has to be right here because that's exactly in the middle of this line. And so knowing the fact that the center is always the midpoint of the major and minor axes will help you find the center. So now I have the center. I can see that it's at negative 1, 1. That's going to help me write the equation because I know the standard form of the equation is x minus h squared over a squared, y minus k squared over k. So at this point, I know h and k. I know h is negative 1, and I know k is positive 1. So I'm going to fill that information in here. So it's going to be x plus 1 and y minus 1. Okay. So now I'm going to think about how I'm going to find a and b. And of course, I'm sorry, this is equal to 1 always. So now I'm going to figure out how to find a and b. They didn't tell me anything about a and b, but again, knowing what I know about the standard form, I know that the a value describes the horizontal axis. In this case, the value underneath the x squared will describe the horizontal axis and the value under by will describe the vertical. Since I'm given the vertical axis from top to bottom, I can find from the center that it's 4 away. And so that tells me my b in this case is 4 squared. So it looks like the only thing I'm missing is how big the horizontal axis, which should make sense because it's the only thing I don't have. So the question is, how does the foci help me? Because they told me that. I didn't need that to find the center, nor did I need that to find the 4 value for the length of the major axis from the center to the vertex. So the question is, how am I going to find A? Well, what do we know about the foci? The foci, remember, that's represented with C. And the way we used to find it is to do A squared minus B squared. So I do know C because they told me the foci were 2 away from the center once I graphed everything. So I know c is 2. So that tells me in the equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. I know c is 2. I also know, remember the a and b, a has to be the major axis. And I know that is 4 squared. So that's going to be equals 4 squared minus something squared. And that's what I'm looking for. I know I use the letter A underneath the x value, but remember with the focus, it's always the larger axis minus the smaller axis squared. So now let's see what I have here. I have 4 equals 16 minus B squared. So hopefully you're seeing that B squared has to be 12. And a simple subtraction and addition will help you see that. But 16 minus 12 equals 4. So B squared equals Uh, which means, of course, b is equal to the square root of 12. Now, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. The question says find the endpoints of the minor axis, which they did not give me. But now that I have the b value as the square root of 12, I can find that. I also remember I needed to finish the equation. So now I can finish the equation and put the number 12 under here. Because that is what b squared equals. The length of the minor axis is the square root of 12, and that square root is 12. So I have my equation. Now I just need to find and approximate square root of 12. 
is about 3.46. Now I'm going to graph the major axis about just under 3.5, 1, 2, 3.5 in both directions. So approximate that so I can make a sketch if I want it. But really the question said find the endpoints of the major axis. So knowing what we know about the minor, I'm sorry, of the minor axis, the endpoints, notice the y value stays the same as the center. So I know this the y value is 1 for both of them because that's how high up it is. Remember, I'm finding these endpoints. We'll call it E1 and E2. E1, remember we started at the center and we walked 3.46 or exactly square root of 12, if we're being exact, to the right. So we went from negative 1 plus the square root of 12 to the right. The other one we went negative 1 minus the square root of 12 to the left. So my two points are, let me write that a little bit nicer for you, negative 1 minus the square root of 12, comma 1, and negative 1 plus the square root of 12, plus 1, comma 1, excuse me. And of course the y value is 1 for both. So here are your two endpoints of your minor axis. And remember, we got the 12 by working backwards with the information for C. So this is a little bit more advanced, but you're going to give this a shot in one of your checkpoints, and we'll practice this in class as well. So another problem that we might come across is similar to what we had with the circle, and it's when we have an equation that is an ellipse, and we'll see why in just a moment. Uh, they're going to tell us it's an ellipse, and we're going to put it into standard form by completing the square. So just like the circle, we're going to start with rearranging the x's together, we're going to put the y's together, and we're going to put the constants on the other side. In this case, the 11 is already over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on the x's, and I'm going to complete the square on the y's, and keep the equation balanced. So keeping my process the same as what you've been doing all year, factor out the 4, so we're dealing with x squared plus 4x. So in my perfect square, I'd have x squared, I'd have 2x in each corner, making a 4 in that corner. And in the end, I'd have 4 parentheses x plus 2 squared. But remember what we added on the left here, we need to add to the right. So the 4 in here isn't just a 4, remember it's scaled up by 4. So we really created a 16 with this perfect square formation here. So we need to add 16 onto the other side. Now we're going to do the same process with the y's. So we're going to start with factoring out the 9. So we're dealing with y squared minus 2y. But then we're going to take that minus 2y and we're going to put it into a perfect square. So it's going to be y squared minus 1y in each corner. So that would make a 1 up here in that corner. So my perfect square for the y's would be 9 times y minus 1 squared. Taking a look at what that created though, it created 9 because 9 times 1 is 9. So I have to add 9 onto the other side. So on the left of my equation I have my x and y squared completed. On the right, it looks like I have 2036. So going back to what the standard form of the ellipse is, we have a lot of great work here, but we don't have it in standard form. So we have this equation, but it's not in standard form because of two things. Hopefully you're recognizing what standard form is. First of all, it doesn't have a 1 right here. So standard form has a 1 on the right. The second thing it has that it shouldn't is the constants in front of the parentheses. So first we always take care of the 1, and remember we do that by dividing by the number. So in order to do that equally, I need to divide everything on the right, the left and the right by 36. So I can do that separately and simplify. 4 over 36. 4 over 36 will give me x plus 2 
squared will stay, but the 4 and 36 simplify to leaving me 9 on the bottom. So we're simplifying fractions. And the other side will be y minus 1 squared. Again, the 9 and the 36 simplify and give me 4 on the bottom. So now I have the equation in standard form, just like I asked you to. And I can answer the questions as asked. The questions are, where is the center, the vertices, the foci, and the endpoints of the minor axis? So I'm going to find those major points by finding the center. So now that it's in standard form, the center is very obvious to see. It's going to be at negative 2 comma 1 because each comma k. The vertices, of course, are the major axis. And since that 9 occurred underneath the x is larger than the 4, my major axis is going to be along the x direction. And 9 squared is actually 3. So from my center, I would go 3 to the left and the right. So the vertices will be at 3 to the left, which is 1, 1. I'm sorry, that's 3 to the right. And then 3 to the left is negative 5, 1. A sketch is worth so much right now. So if you're not seeing this, you go over to negative 2, up to 1. And then you just sketch. You count 3 to the left to find your vertex. And you count 3 to the right. Two, three, to find your other vertex. So if you can't do this in your head, this is how you'll do it on the graph. And then again, 4 is equal to 2 squared, so my minor axis is going to be up and down. So my, my endpoints of my minor axis are going to be up and down from the center, so negative 2 will stay the same, but I'm going to go up and down 2. So I'm going to go up 2 to 3, down 2 to negative 1. Again, Use the sketch to help you. Remember, we're up at 1. I'm going to go up 2 to 3 to get your major, your minor axis, and then, of course, down 2 to get your other one. So these are your two endpoints. And then last but not least, it asks for the foci. So the foci, remember, are a distance of c, where c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. Our a and b are 5 and 4. So 5 minus, I'm sorry, 9 and 4. 9 minus 4 is 5, so c squared is 5. But really, it's the square root of 5. And again, it's in the same direction as the vertex, so it's the square root of 5 in both directions. So just like we found the vertices, we're going to add on the square root of 5 in both directions. So from negative 2, we're going to add square root of 5 and stay at 1. And then we're going to take negative 2 and take off square root of 5, go backwards and stay at 1. So those are my two focus points. They'll be square root of 5 away. And I have the final answer to that question. So the process is similar to that of a circle. It's just now we have a slightly different equation and a very different standard form. So let's take a look at the next question. The next question is an example of a, an application question that you're going to see in class for your assignment. So we have this ellipse, and this is actually a true thing. This happens. There's an elliptical dome verb, even at the capital, I've heard. And the at the Grand Floridian Hotel in Disney World, there's an example of an elliptical dome room. One person whispering at one focus can hear what is spoken if they're seated, if someone else is seated at the other focus. So they give us some dimensions, and the goal is to find the standard form of the equation and how far from the center of the room is the focus located. So we're looking where the focus is located. So using this information, hopefully you're seeing that the major axis is 20 and the minor axis is 10, because of course this is only half of an elliptical dome. We are going to look at the bottom half. So right now, and our center is at 0, so we don't even need to worry about because We're going to call this center 0, 0, the center of the room. So the major axis is left and right, so it would be on the bottom of x, and it would be squared, plus y squared over the minor axis equals 1. So there's your standard form of the equation because we're just simply taking the information we have and putting it into the equation.
Now the question about the focus. So we just simply need to know that the focus is always found by subtracting a squared minus b squared. So in our case, 20 squared minus 100 squared. 20 squared is 400 minus 10 squared is 100. That's equal to c squared. So c squared is 300. But of course, the question is asking how far from the room from the center is it. So we actually need c. So don't stop at c squared. Make sure you find c. So we're finding the square root of 300, and we're seeing that it's 17.32 feet away. And there's your answer, because the focus is always a squared minus c squared. That would be the distance to the person standing at one corner and the other. So that is true. Focus points do have a reflection property with sound, and that will happen if you are standing in a perfectly elliptical domed room. So those are your problems for the video for now. The checkpoints have to do with the first two examples that you saw. So try completing the square on number one and finding all those key information. And then for number two, see if you can write the equation. Please feel, please definitely draw a picture. At least start the sketch of number two, even if you're getting stuck on the full equation. See how far you can get. That's definitely a hard, the harder of the two. Bring your questions into class and be sure to fill out your Google form.